In this video, I'm going to show you how I made an Xbox controller cake using just this as my template. Let's have a look. So here I'm just going to put some buttercream on the drum to fix and secure the cake to the cake drum. But the process started really with making this template. So I decided how big I wanted the cake to be and that's around about 10 inches. These cakes that I've baked are 12 inch by 8 inch and I wanted the cake to sit on a 12 inch drum. So I made the Xbox controller template about 10 inches wide. Um, it was a screenshot I took from the internet and I just made the width of it 10 inches and I kept the proportions exactly the same. So when my image was finished, everything was exactly to scale. And when I hit print, I've got this, which you see in front of you, and it should be everything in proportion like it would be on the controller. It's just scaled up bigger to the actual size that I want the cake to be. And from that point, I can use this piece of paper every step of the way to get the exact cake that I want in the end. So once I've stacked both cakes on top of each other and I've put a nice thick layer of chocolate buttercream in between, I'm going to use the template to cut the shape that I need. The template needs to be kept in the same position as you cut because if you move that at all, then you're going to get a bit of an odd shape. I'm cutting away all the excess cake with a really sharp paring knife, not a serrated one, but those are also good for this job. Um, and now I'm just showing you here that the Xbox controller, when it's sitting flat on a work surface, it does have gaps underneath where it's sort of sloping. Um, so now I'm going to cut those away from the cake as well. So I'm cutting a rounded slope at the top end of the cake and then I'm going to cut a similar slope down at the bottom, just under where the toggles are. I'm not cutting away too much here. We need to remember that the more we cut, the more cake we lose. Um, so I just want to give the illusion that there is space under the cake so that it looks more realistic. Another thing that I'll do now to make it look realistic is I'm going to take the tiniest amount of cake away between the very bottom of the cake and the drum. And that makes it look as if it's all rounded um, sitting on the drum as opposed to being fixed square to the drum. So next, I'm going to cover the entire cake in the most delicious milk chocolate ganache. Um, and I'm going to cover every single area of the cake here because what this does is it locks in all the freshness of the cake. But it also gives the cake a lot more stability. And that's really needed with a sculpted cake like this because we want it to hold its shape. I don't want it to come later and put sugar paste or fondant. Um, on top and have the cake crumble in certain areas um, and this gives it a really strong and also smooth finish as you can see. I'm now going around the cake with a Squire's Kitchen um, flexible smoother so this is kind of like a piece of um, acetate but it's, it's really strong and flexible and it means I can smooth this ganache off completely um, and as you can see, it's so much cleaner than what it was a few minutes ago when I had just done it with the palette knife. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking a sort of triangular shaped palette knife and I'm going around that area where I had cut away that tiny amount of cake earlier. And I'm just sharpening up that area so that I've got that nice clear groove that you can see now as I'm lifting the cake. <clears throat> and that makes it look 3D. So I've got my template back out now and I'm going to mark out where all these buttons and toggles are going to go because um, this is what's going to make it look really um, impressive and realistic. So as you can see here, there's nothing fancy going on. I've got some really big piping nozzles um, and some circle cutters and I'm just basically holding them against the template to find which ones are matching up with the circles that I've got. So I had a really extra large piping nozzle there to make the sort of directional buttons that I've just um, pushed in. And I have a slightly smaller grass nozzle that I'm going to push down for each of the toggles and both of them are the same size. So I'll use the same circle for those. That one was slightly too small, um, but you'll see what I do later to sort of make up for that. Um, and then I have a small circle cutter to mark out the buttons with the letters. 
um, the small buttons in the middle and then I've got an oval um, push cutter which marks out that middle button which is an oval shape. So this is me now working on what will be under the sugar paste when we come to add it because the Xbox controller has a few bevels um, and things that sit proud. So when it comes to things like that, I like to sort of build the shapes up with modelling chocolate. So that's what I've got here. I'm using some Saracino um, modelling chocolate, the milk chocolate one. So I've rolled that out nice and long. And I'm going to put it around the outside of the circle that I marked because, as I said earlier, that smaller grass nozzle was just a fraction too small for what I wanted it. So this is going to make it the right size. Um, so yeah, I just put that around the outside of the circle, smooth it out, get it nice and um, sleek with no um, raggy edges. And then I'm just using my fingers to um, make sure it's fixed against the ganache as well. And then I'm going to do the same for the identical toggle on the left hand side here. So I was just holding it up to make sure it's about the same size and width as the one that I've just rolled. And I'm just going to place that um, around the other circle in the exact same way. So again, I'll just cut away any excess and fix it down onto the ganache so it's not going to slip about when I come to put the sugar paste on. And it's that time now to um, add the white sugar paste, which is going to bring everything to life. So I've got some white couture sugar paste here. Um, I've rolled it out nice and um, smooth and even. And I'm just going to drape the whole panel over the top of the cake. So I'll just use my hands now to smooth out any areas where it's not fixed down. And to make sure that the sugar paste is moulding around all the areas that I've just built up with the modelling chocolate. So, yeah, I just want to make sure there's no air bubbles, which you can pop with an acupuncture needle if that was the case. But I think we're OK here. Um, but it all just needs to be really um, snug against the cake. We don't want any creases or lumps and bumps. And when you're quite happy that everything is where it needs to be and it's all snug against the cake, um, I'm just going to take the knife and use the back end of it to cut away the paste. Um, it can be too easy to cut into the cake by accident, so that's why I use the back of the knife. Now that we have the sugar paste on, everything's starting to look a bit better and this is the sort of fun part. So I've got some modelling paste here. I've got some black Saracino modelling paste and I'm going to make those big toggles. So I started out rolling two balls roughly the same size and then I realised that they were not the same size and I wanted them to be exact. So I've got some scales here um, and I'm just going to weigh them and make sure that they are exactly the same size and then I've got a much better chance of making them exactly the same when they're on the cake. So now that I've got those the right size that I need, I'm rolling it around a little bit with my um, hard smoother and um, just getting the shape that I need first as a ball. And then once I've got that ball shape, I'm just going to use my index finger and my thumb to roll and pull out a little sort of stick from the ball um, to make it more like a toggle. Once I've done this with both, I'm going to place them where they will be fitted on the cake and just make sure that they look like they should. And as you can see, those both balance really well. So um, I'm quite happy with that and I'm happy with the size and everything. So what I'm going to do now is take these little circle cutters and I'm just going to measure them against the um, stick part of the toggle and try and find one that um, is pretty much the same size. And what I'm going to do now is use those circle cutters to take away just that amount of sugar paste um, and those little indentations that I've got on the cake. And the point of this is so that the modelling paste will stick to the ganache underneath the fondant um, or the sugar paste. But also when you take that circle away, it's sitting sort of inside the um, sugar paste area so you've got a few mil of sugar paste around the modeling paste and it's just going to give it a little bit more support to stay in place so it's going to be stuck to the sugar paste and the ganache 
and it's housed inside so it's not just sitting on top and sort of hoping that it's not going to fall over. So I've took that away now and I've just added a small amount of water um, using one of my little Wilton brushes um, and that's going to help the modelling paste stick on the cake. Um, so once I've done that I've used a, quite a big balling tool there and I've just pushed that into the top of the toggle that I made earlier. So now it's less of a ball shape and it's got that big indentation in the middle, which Xbox controller toggles have. That's sort of that kind of ergonomic shape where your thumb would fit. So that makes it look more realistic as well. So I've got that in place. It's sitting, standing up. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. And I'm just going to repeat the same process on the other toggle because they are exactly the same. So while I'm doing this, I just wanted to let you know that I plan on uploading um, videos like this on a weekly basis. So if you enjoy this type of video, um, then please like it and subscribe to the channel for more. So now I've got my template back and I'm just going to hold it up and find where I need to put those indentations in again. Because what I didn't realise earlier was that the sugar paste was going to completely cover all the circles that I made earlier so we need to do it again. Um, so what I'm doing here now is I'm taking this big giant piping nozzle and I'm just putting some cling film over the top of it and what that does is it gives me the indentation on the sugar paste but it sort of puffs it up, it makes it look um, like the circle's there but it's not taking anything away, it's not sharp, it's sort of puffing it up um, and that tells me where I need to put this little directional pad but it also gives me the right shape. Um, and if you have an Xbox controller um, nearby, then you can check out exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so once I've got that, I'm just rolling out some black Saracino modeling paste. Um, and I've used the nozzle this time to cut the circle completely. So I've got the right size here now. I'm placing it directly on top of my template. And that shows me exactly what size I need it to be because this template is to scale as I mentioned earlier um, and I can use it to get all the details that I need. It should be the exact size that I want it. Um, so I've got this little modeling tool now. It's sort of like a cone, like a sharp cone shape at the end of it and I thought this would be quite good just to get the right angles um, for this directional pad. So I've marked the middle point of the um, circle with one end of the tool. And then I'm using the sloped end of the cone shape. I'm pressing it into the modeling paste and then without moving it up or down, I'm rolling it around until I want to stop where the next line would be of the directional pad. Um, and I'm just doing this all the way around and leaving a gap um, where the pad would sit proud. And that's sort of like on the Xbox controller, you have your up, down, left, right buttons. And that will leave the impression of the button when you've pushed down um, all the way around in the four spots. So I've got a PME Dresden tool now and I'm just using um, both sides really just to sharpen up the lines that I've just made with that other tool. There's also a sort of square shape in the very centre of this directional pad and I'm just making that with that veining side of the modelling tool. Um, it's sort of like a ridge that it has on the edge, so it allows you to um, straighten it out. So I'm taking the nozzle again and I'm just going to cut the circle to the right size again because all that um, modelling and pushing that we just did made the piece of paste go out of shape. So now I'm going to put the pad, the little directional pad that we've just made, I'm going to put that on the cake. So I've made a small indentation with a balling tool in the centre of that um, little puffy circle that we made earlier and that's going to allow the directional pad to sit in the middle of it and then sort of drape over the areas where it's sitting puffed up um, which gives you the right shape. And then just adding even more detail I'm just taking a little piece of the black modelling paste and I'm rolling it out with my flat smoother. So what I'm doing is I'm holding one end of it and I'm very softly rolling over it with the smoother. Um, this gives me an even um, line so there's no finger marks from rolling it with my hands. 
And I find that if I hold one end of it while I'm just really gently rolling the smoother over it, then it elongates the line that I'm trying to create. Um, whereas just rolling it, sometimes um, you, you're not really making it any longer. Um, so once I've got the length that I need, I'm just going to put that around the directional pad that we've just made. So it's going, it's going underneath um, and then that pad is going to sit over the top of it. And that gives me the shape that I need, but it also covers any white that you may have been able to see underneath earlier. So I'm back with my template again, and I'm now marking out where that Xbox button, big X button in the middle goes. So I've got my circle cutter in the right size, and I'm taking away the piece of fondant or sugar paste um, where that button is going to be. Um, and then I've got a piece of modeling paste. Again, um, I've used the circle cutter in the same size to get the button the size that I need. And then when I've tried to put it in place, I decided that actually it was sitting to um, low down. So I've put the piece of paste back in, um, but it wasn't for nothing really because it still sits below the level of the white sugar paste that we put on earlier. So <laughs> it sort of seems a bit pointless, but it does it does look like it should so anyway i've taken the um dresden tool from earlier and i've marked out the shape of the x it's sort of like a curvy x on this one so i've marked that into the black modeling paste and then i've got some white modeling paste that i've rolled out and i'm just going to push that into the shape that i've made with the x on that little button there so it's really fidgety work but it's all these little details that make a cake look realistic and impressive. So I'm just going over the details, making sure it's nice and neat with my modeling tool. And then I'm going to take that circle cutter once again and go over it and make sure it's exactly the right size and shape that I need. And when I'm happy with it, I'll put it in place on the cake. Again, it's just water that we need here. Tiny little bit of water with a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush. Um, these ones are designed for using um, with cake decorating. And these are uh, the purple ones are Wilton brushes. So now that I've got that in place, I'm going back and I'm marking out the um, lettered buttons with my um, circle cutter, which I'm pretty sure is the same size. And again, I'm removing those little pieces of paste so that when I put the buttons in, it looks nice and realistic and it's housed in the cake. So I've got some more black Saracino modeling paste. And I just wanted to say as well, the reason I'm using modeling paste and not sugar paste is because it's firmer and it sets much more firm. So it is easier to work with, especially for these small parts. But it also does make a big difference when, when you're making these little buttons and things um, because they hold their shape better. Um, later, I'm going to paint on them. And by that point, they'll be nice and firm and there'll be no indentations left from my paintbrush. Whereas if I had just used the plain sugar paste, it would be leaving marks and it'd be much tougher. So anyway, um, I'm now making the buttons for the middle of the Xbox controller. And this is another reason where it's going to show you that the modeling paste is a much better option for doing this detailed work. So I'm starting out by using my trusty metal circle cutters again. This one is even smaller. So I'm cutting out those circles with the cling film over the cutter again because I want the buttons to be sort of puffy, which is exactly what I've done with the black buttons that I just put in a moment ago. Um, so they make them look a lot more like buttons. If I didn't use that cling film method, they would be like cylinders instead of sort of um, rounded on the top. So again, I'm using the same size cutters that I've got the buttons with and I'm taking that sugar paste out and you won't be able to tell, but I've replaced it with the white modeling paste. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because of the camera angle, you can't see it, but I've put a little bit of detail on the um, side of the cake, which would be the underside of the Xbox controller. And those are just things like charging ports, um, docks for earphones, that sort of thing. So again, just the more detail you make to a cake, the more realistic and impressive it is. Um, and that's just what I'm doing here. So I've got some grooves along as well, which is the sort of line in the plastic where the controller would be um, held together. And now I'm just going to round the bottom of the cake um, with a ball and tool. I'm just making everything smooth, any indentations where there should be. And I'm using the ridge 
um, bottom part of my Dresden tool to mark in where those top buttons would be. So the ones at the very top of the controller where you would use your fingers um, to pull, sort of, they're sort of like triggers. Um, so I'm just using my um, Dresden tool to put in those grooves and make them look like buttons. But all we're doing is modelling the sugar paste that's already on the cake. We're not taking anything off or adding anything on. We're just modelling the paste that's already there with the veiner end of the Dresden tool. And again, I'm using this sort of puffy method with the um, small end of a piping nozzle here and just marking out another sort of little earphone dock or something in the back of the controller. Um, so I'm quite happy with everything I've got now. Everything's in its place and it's pretty much just the very fine details that we're adding on now. So I'm hand painting the buttons. I've got the controller in front of me and I'm painting on the detail on each of these buttons. And it's right about here where I'm looking at the controller, I'm looking at the cake, I'm painting on the detail and I've realised that I'm looking at the controller upside down. <laughs> so I've flipped it round and realised that I've just painted all of the detail upside down. So this is why it's really good to have the buttons as modelling paste because if this was sugar paste I would not be able to just scoop it out and move them about. I would have had to sort of scoop them out, scrap them um, and start again. But because the modelling paste firms up so much more than sugar paste I can just and just pop them out with my Dresden tool. Um, flip, I flipped that bottom button round upside down so it now faces the correct way and the detail is right. And I swapped the left and right buttons over um, so those are in the right place. And now I'm just going to finish off that detail on the left hand button um, and make that look like it should. So all is not lost. I didn't have to start from scratch with those little buttons. Um, but yeah, that was a <laughs> that was a bit of a boo-boo. Um, so now I'm moving on to the lettered buttons and I'm painting on the letters Y, A, B and X and each one is a different colour. So I'm using edible dusts here which you can see in that little glass drawer. Um, it's not actually glass, it's plastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, little fancy drawers I've got for my edible colours. So to make these into an edible paint I've got a little palette pot, um, a little mixing palette, and I just put some of the edible dust onto the palette and I mix it with dipping solution. You can also use rejuvenator spirit, you can use clear alcohol like vodka or um, lemon essence if you don't want to use any kind of alcohol whatsoever. Um, dipping solution is really good though because it evaporates so, so quickly that um, it is just like using a paint. And as you can see, while I'm painting here, um, the alcohol is evaporating um so if you if you looked at that b when i painted it earlier it was almost invisible and as the alcohol has evaporated it's become brighter um so i've done the yellow and the red buttons and now i need to make green and i wasn't happy with any of the green dust that i had so what i've done is i've mixed the blue and the yellow that i've used for the x and the y and i've made the green using that mixture um I still felt it was a little bit dark, so I actually added a little bit of white, which I'm doing here, um, to the mix. And by that point, I was quite happy with the colour and I could paint on the letter A. Um, my edible dusts are a mixture of fractal, um, rainbow dust. Um, there's quite a few different brands that I like to use, um, but it's most I just mostly go by colour. I like to buy um, by colour, not necessarily by brand. So I painted that A there and I wasn't happy with it. It didn't look like the A on the button on the controller in front of me. So I've just removed that. That was a water brush that I was using. Um, so it's literally just a little brush that has a cartridge and you can fill it with cooled, boiled water. So it's nice and clean. Um, and you can just brush it over whatever you need to use it with. Um, and in this case, just a little bit of water on your brush will remove that edible dust or that edible paint. Um, and then I just dried it with a nice clean piece of paper towel um, and I painted it again and I was much happier the second time round. Um, so that's pretty much it for the cake. I'm quite happy with how it turned out but one of my sort of pet hates <laughs> is a silver foil drum that's not been iced. So we need to ice the drum. 
So I've got a nice bright sky blue here um, and it looks really good against all the white on the controller. So I'm just rolling out a piece. I've cut the rough shape of the controller out of that piece so that it will fit around the shape and then I've just pushed it in place on the drum and it sticks with just a little bit of water that you can brush on with a paste, uh, pastry brush or a paintbrush, whatever you like. Just don't use too much because it becomes very sticky and very messy. What I also like to do when I'm covering a drum is to cut over both pieces of sugar paste. As you see there, I didn't just cut next to the join, I cut over the join. And that means that when you come to join the two pieces, they will be sort of like two pieces of the same hole, if that makes sense. So they will line up perfectly, is what I'm trying to say. And then you just um, make them meet. A little bit of water in between will make them stick. And then if you spend a bit of time rubbing over the surfaces it will blend away that seam um, and the hardback plastic smoother um, that I've been using all along this FMM one if you just run that over the top of the ice drum like I'm doing now once it's nice and secure you can um, take away any fingerprints any finger marks or indentations and make it nice and flat and clean looking and the last step really um, aside from putting ribbon around the drum which is another thing that needs to be done <laughs> Um, I'm just going to glaze those buttons. So if you look at the real controller, the buttons are, I mean, they actually look like they've been glazed. They're not just shiny. They look like a sort of clear resin has been put over the top of the buttons. So that's that can be achieved exactly with this method. So you paint the, the letters on. You need to let them dry or this glaze will smudge them. But once they're dry, you add on the glaze, you let it dry completely and you add a little bit more and you get this um, finish. And this is the finished cake. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel.